smell okay. cute. So what we're going to start with, again, just like we've been doing with the shoulder, we want to make sure that we assess their motion first. Can you bring your arm down to your side here? Can you bring them up here like this? Yeah, with the bicep. Okay. okay, so we're going to start with the biceps. Roll over your toes. Okay, can you come back up here? Good. We're going to support back here at the uh, distal humerus, and we're going to apply, bring your arm down a little bit, about half range, okay? And you're going to apply at the lower portion of the wrist, just like we did before. Don't let me move it. One, two, three, good. So she's a grade of five. If she broke after two, she'd be a grade of four. She was able to go through full range of motion. So she was a grade, she achieved a grade of three, okay? So this is our against gravity, going into a gravity reduced position. You can do it holding your client's arm. You can put them up on the table, okay? <clears throat> so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna feel here at the biceps. You guys know how to find the biceps tendon, pretty easy. Okay, so we're just gonna ask them, can you move into, uh, wow. bend your elbow? Good, all right. So she was able to move in a gravity reduced position. She's a grade of two. If I feel a contraction here, try to move. She's a grade of one. If there's no contraction, she's a zero. Pretty simple. Okay, elbow extension. So you'll see sometimes that people will do testing of elbow extension in the same position. Don't let me push you in. Okay? Am I going against gravity here? Yes. Am I going no. against gravity? No. Okay. So we're gonna bring her up here. Okay, can you reach down here? And can you straighten her arm all the way up? Good, she's a grade of three. All right. And I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna support the arm here at the distal um, humerus again. Bend your elbow just a little bit. Good. We're gonna, you always want to take them out of full extension or full flexion. So partial. Okay, hold it. Don't let me push it down. Three. Okay. Good. She's like, I'm gonna fight her. <laughs> so she was she was able to hold against resistance, so she's a grade of five. She broke, she was a grade of four. She was able to achieve full range of motion um, against gravity, so she was a at least a grade of three. She wasn't, we're gonna bring her back down in the same position. But this time we're gonna we're gonna palpate at the triceps, so the back of the arm here. Okay? So can you extend your arm? Good. So she's a grade of two, so she's in gravity reduced plane. If I could only feel a contraction, she would be a grade of one. If there was no contraction, she would be a grade of zero. Okay? Again, very straightforward. You guys are starting to get this? Yes. And understanding it. Okay, so let's give you a few minutes. This is when you have to be really careful with where you place your hands. They need to be proximal to the wrist because if you apply pressure up here, you're gonna to torque their wrist and you're gonna tear their TFCC. Okay, we don't wanna do that. Anybody know what TFCC is? Triangular fibrocartilage complex. <laughs> I thought we were gonna say tentative. I thought we were gonna say tentative latte. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's, it's cartilage that holds the, the um, radius and the ulna together at the distal radial ulnar joint so that you can rotate. Okay, you rotate them, all right? So I'm gonna come here, keep your elbow in at your side. So to test um, supination, so if you think about which way they have to turn their palm to supinate, so they're gonna try and, you're gonna have them try and turn their palm up, okay? So can you turn your palm up? Good, you popped. I did pop. And can you turn your palm down? Yeah. So I have them do the motion and I try and restrict them from doing the motion as opposed to applying resistance. Does that make sense? This is the quick and easy way to do it. And um, it, it's, I think it's just so much easier. And like I said, be real careful that you don't come out here. She popped a little bit. Okay, try again. Did she pop again and down? How did it feel? It felt great. Okay. <laughs> the other way you can do it is you can have them move into neutral and you can just try and push them mm. into supination. So if I'm trying to push them into supination, what am I testing? Uh, 
right? If I try to push them into pronation, what am I testing? Okay. Make sense? You totally confused? No. no. Okay. So that's your against gravity for that. And then your gravity reduced. Again, you're coming here. Okay. And for your supinator, you're going to support their leg. Or you can support it on your leg. You can support it on the table. But um, you're going to feel, can you try and turn your palm up? So you're going to try and feel for the supinator. And then when you're trying to turn the palm down, you're going to feel for the pronator, which is up here. Okay. So these can be done together quick and easy. All right, questions? Um, screening for range of motion for the wrist. You want to, when they're doing extension, so remember it's against gravity, you wanna make sure that their palm is down. So can you bring your wrist up this way? Good. And then you want to flip it over, palm up for flexion, bring it up this way. Good. Okay? So that's your screen for wrist flexion and wrist extension. Okay? So when we go in to test for wrist flexion, we'll do wrist flexion first. Can you bring it all the way up? Good. She's a three. We know. So we're going to apply pressure. Don't let me pull you down. One, two, three. She's a five because she was able to hold against resistance. She would be a four if she broke, and we know she has a three because she went through full range of motion. I generally tend to, you see how they're, they're doing there? Look at her fingers, okay? I try to just have them relax their fingers because again, the wrist or the finger flexors and extensors go across the wrist, so they're going to work on the wrist. So if we can just have those relaxed, you're gonna get more of a true wrist test, okay? All right. If we're going to take her into a gravity reduced position, her arm's going to be on the table. Generally, we're doing this at a table. And you're just going to try and palpate for the wrist flexors. So right now, if you'll just bring your wrist forward, you can feel it. Can you feel your wrist flexors? Mm -hmm. So that's where you want to palpate. These are all very close to the surface, so they're easy to palpate. Okay? So we're just going to have her bring her wrist forward and we're going to palpate if we can feel if she can move it we're at a two if she can't but we can feel palpation we're at a one if there's no if there's no palpable muscle contraction we're at a zero okay all right can you slide to the next one and remember that your flexion or your um, wrist flexion wrist extension is more than one muscle so i put the muscle up there in the abbreviated terms because it messed up my slide if I put the whole thing on there. Okay? All right. So we've already screened her for wrist extension. So again, we want her to relax her fingers. Can you bring your wrist up? So let me bring it down. One, two, three. Did you see her fingers pop up? She just kicked in her EDC. Don't bring your fingers up. Bring it in. Keep your fingers down. Hold. One, <laughs> two. Three. So you want to watch out for that compensatory motion of bringing those fingers up because if they're bringing the fingers up, you're not just testing the ECU, the ECR, B, and L, you are testing the EDC also. You got all those acronyms? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, and then again, we're going to go into the gravity reduced position. So you can test, um, you can test wrist flexion and extension in gravity reduced right after each other if you want in the clinic. Okay, so again, bring your wrist up, feel where you feel. Keep those fingers down. Where do you feel the muscle? That's where you're gonna palpate. Okay, you can feel them. All right, so we're gonna go back here. Can you bring your wrist back? Okay, so she can bring it back in a gravity reduced plane. She's a two. If she couldn't bring it all the way back, but I can feel a palpation, she's a one. If there's no palpation of the muscle, it's a zero. Okay? So that's wrist flexion and extension. Now, a lot of times you can tease out the different muscles. Um, we're just doing a gross wrist flexion, wrist extension, and then we're gonna do um, radial and ulnar deviation. Okay? So, could you go to the next? So for ulnar deviation, 
You're going to have them come up here and bring the hand up, like you're trying to pat your head, I guess, so to speak. Okay? So, if she can bring it up, she's a three. Don't let me pull it down. Bring it up. Hold. One, two, three. She was able to hold against resistance. She's a five. If she was going to break, she'd be a four. She'd get through full range of motion, so she's a three. Okay? So this is our against gravity. We're going to bring her back down here on the table. And gravity reduced. Can you bring it over? Okay? And you're going to palpate. You can, again, when you're doing these movements, do them on yourself. Feel, feel for the muscles. Okay? So there are two muscles that are going to bring her into ulnar deviation. So you can feel... The extensor carpi ulnaris, it goes through over the ulnar styloid. You can feel the flexor carpi. I think the flexor carpi ulnaris is easier to feel. It goes right over that pisiform. It actually has a pisiform in it. So you're going to feel for the muscle contraction there. Those are your tendons, but you can usually feel it right there. Okay? And I'm just going to go right into the radial deviation in this position your gravity reduced position, and she's just gonna go into radial deviation, okay? You're gonna feel the FCR, the ECRB, and the ECRL, okay? So you can kind of feel it on the side, but play around, really do start to play around with these. I know everybody's talking about doing the practical and I'm gonna to touch here, but start feeling for it. These are really easy muscles to feel for so that you're actually putting your hands on it and feeling it as opposed to Oh, well, this is where I would feel it, okay? All right, so for radial deviation against gravity, bring your thumb up. She's a three, okay? Bring it up again. Hold. One, two, three. Oh, I oh. <laughs> so she, she was able to hold against gravity or against resistance for um, three seconds, so she's a five. If she broke, she would be a four, and she was able to go through the full range of motion, so she's a three, okay? These are really, again, simple and easy to find the muscles. So you guys practice these for, let's do like five or 10 minutes, and then we'll go on to a few other things, okay? Mm -hmm. and or for the PowerPoint, it's for your toolbox and for your information, okay? Which is why it's got a lot more information on all the slides. So pay attention for just a little bit, and then we will let you guys practice or work on your PowerPoints or whatever, okay? All right, here we go. Here is your composite MP flexion and extension, okay? I have made a PDF of this. You guys don't have to take pictures of it. Mm -hmm. I made a PDF of it, and I'm going to be sending it out to you, okay? So we've got your, for flexion, your gravity. You see now what happens when you push on the fingers as opposed to the palm? You're now testing all of these muscles, okay? All right, and then for gravity reduced, again, you're just palpating for feeling those tendons here. You can also palpate down here for the larger muscles, but these up here are going to be in the hand. You guys remember intrinsic muscles? Okay. So I wanted to show you this and this one and this one, because you see if you're up here when you're testing wrist, you're actually not testing the wrist. Okay. So extension, you're trying to push them down into flexion. They're trying to resist and you're going to palpate these big tendons back here on the back of the hand. Okay? Again, here are all of the muscles that do this. Okay? okay. We're going to the um, PIP joint and how you test. You're going to isolate. The PIP joint 
is more easily isolated because your flexure digitorum superficialis, each digit actually has its own muscle belly. The, X, the FBP is a shared muscle belly, okay? So you can test individual fingers against gravity. Here's your muscles. The FD, FDP is actually working on this because it goes across the joint. Remember, it goes across the joint, it's working on it. And again, same thing, you're palpating in the palm of the hand to feel it. You just bring your finger down like this, you can feel it moving in there. And for the extensors, you're gonna put it here and you're gonna push down, okay? That's the wrong picture. <laughs> I pulled that straight from Pedretti. I'll have to go back and look at it. It is. It is? <laughs> Why did you touch there for extension? Okay. Yeah, it should be on the back of the hand. I guess because you're, you're testing the, uh, the intrinsic muscles. That's what we're looking at. Okay, next. DIP. I don't ever do this. Don't ever do this. Because they're, you're isolating a joint that works with the mus shared muscle belly with all the fingers. So a lot of times I'll just have them do this to test it. Okay. Again, I'm giving it to you guys. We rarely, I, um, isolate muscles in the hand to test, we do the grip and the pen string. And then the extension, again, you're filling for the, the um, in, inter, bleh, intrinsic muscles, okay? Thumb, yes? Would you isolate the test muscle chain for an individual finger to the Depends on what it is. The, the, generally speaking, if you've got an isolated muscle injury in the finger, it's a flexor tendon repair. You've ruptured a tendon or an extensor tendon repair, and you're not gonna mus do a muscle strength test on that period. It's just not a real functional thing. I mean, people use their hands in a composite manner, with the exception of pinching. And that's why we test the composite grasp when we test the different pinches, okay? So thumb MP, pushing down, and then feeling into the thenar muscles. You can feel those thenar muscles, okay, for your gravity reduced. IP, I don't like to do this one either because it, you see what's kicking in? Truly to test for MP, you would need the tip bent. This is actually testing for the longest. And so it's kind of like, it, yes, it works across there, but you can't tell if the extensor pollicis brevis is weak because the extensor pollicis longus is so strong that it overpowers it. So testing this joint, truly to test for what moves that joint, you'd wanna test this one. And you really can't, okay? And again, palpating back here, you can feel the snap box, okay? So back here is the extensor pollicis longus. All right, next, uh, IP joint. Again, the, the thenar is, oh, it's flexion. The thenar is where you're gonna feel for the contraction and you're going to try and apply pressure just to the tip of the joint, okay? And your thumb, your index finger's gonna come down. And then the back, I, this is just like all the other joints that we've been doing. You're doing one, then you're doing the other. It's very similar. Okay, next. Palmer, uh, um, palmer abduction is just pushing into the hand, okay? And you're gonna feel for down here, for the muscle contraction. Next. Radial abduction is, this is kind of, they're almost into a more of a mid-range. I would do it more out to the side and push down here. Again, you've got to be careful because you can even look when I push down. You see what happens? My MP joint is almost like subluxing a little bit. Okay? And then you're going to feel down through here for 
um, the muscles for gravity reduced. One more. Yeah. Opposition. This one's fun. Here, come here. Can you do this? Tip to tip. Get in here and you just go, hold it, and you pull apart. Okay, you're testing the thenar and the hyperthenar muscles when you do that. Most people can't hold that. Try it on each other. It's hard to hold. Okay, and they kind of have it right in the middle, but I usually test here and here. Okay, is that it? Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay.